Hey, it's Avant here. In this video, I wanted to answer the question regarding ranking your system IO website on Google and being able to have somebody type your domain name and being able to find you. Because I've had a few people say, I published my website on system, but I can't see it on Google. Okay. Now, there is a basic misunderstanding that when you buy a domain name, that when you publish a website, it automatically it should be searchable on Google. That is simply does not at all how this works. Now, if it doesn't work that way, well, how does it work? So this video is going to take you and give you a bit of an overview on how to do it. I'm not going to share my screen or anything. I'm simply going to tell you the steps so you can kind of follow along. First of all, I'm not a super SEO expert in any way, but I do know a thing or two, and I just wanted to share with you what I know. So first step with system.io is on every single page, there is a settings section. Now, if you don't know where that settings section is, go find it because it's in the editor on the top left, there's going to be settings. On that section, you scroll down and there is a section that's called SEO settings. So you got to optimize the title of that particular page. You got to put some description, you got to put an image, and then there's going to be a little check mark that says, do you want it to be visible on Google or not? Okay, so make sure that you are ticking it or unticking it depending on what you want. For example, if you have a thank you page, you want to make sure that check mark is ticked because you want to hide the thank you page from the search engines. That's not the page you want Google to find. You want to keep it unchecked for those pages that you want to be found. For example, your squeeze pages, your sales pages, your homepage, your blogs, things along these lines. So that is one thing you guys got to make sure that that check mark is ticked or unticked, depending on what it is that you want. The second thing is that you have to submit your website to Google Search Console, and you also want to install Google Analytics. Now, I have a totally different tutorial on Google Analytics, and I also have a checklist for you to follow. And if you uh, were to go to the description right now and have a look, there is going to be a link there with a checklist on my website. You don't have to opt in or anything, and it will actually show you how to set up your Google Analytics. Now, Google Search Console is a bit of a different process, but it is very similar. You simply open up a Google Search Console account, submit your website, and then what that does is it tells Google, hey, Google, this is my website. Please crawl it. Now, what does that mean by crawl it? That means that Google is going to start looking at your pages and based on the content that is on your pages, it is going to decide what search terms are relevant to your pages. And it's going to decide, so if somebody searches this or that, whether your page should come up and what should it come up for. So if somebody searches making money online or if somebody uh, searches diets for women over 50, or if somebody searches menopause, or if somebody searches how to get, um, uh, how to start a career or how to write a resume or any, doesn't really matter what it, it is your niches, that whenever those keywords or key phrases are getting asked by Google, which one should your website be relevant to? Now, that is in theory how it will work, and then you have a chance of being able to rank on Google. However, that is not where it ends because Google has many, many, many factors as to whether or not it will even rank put you on that first page in the first place. It might have you come up for that keyword, but you'll be on page 17 of Google, which nobody ever goes to. So in order to get to page one, you have to consider a few things. You got to have a lot of content on your website that is relevant to that particular keyword. You got to optimize your website with things that are relevant to the content in that particular keyword. This stuff that you can control and that you can create is called on page SEO, i.e. The things that you can do on the page itself, it's visible that you can optimize in order to rank. For example, if you look at your website, there is always the full URL of your website. So if my website, for example, is aroundbukai.com and then I have forward slash blog, forward slash kajabi versus system.io review 
tutorial or something like that. And that's the actual URL. And it's also in the title. And there's also a blog with outlining a lot of different content about Kajabi and system and comparison and this and that. That is me optimizing that particular page for SEO with on-page SEO strategies. My URL is on point. My headline is on point. There is also different headlines that are called H2, H3, H4. And if you were to look at the text headline in the system IO editor, you will see that you have different options for the different types of headlines. Now this is getting a bit advanced, right? So this is like, I know this is probably going over people's head a little bit and, and that's okay. I'm telling you that because I need you to be aware that you're not like surprised. Oh my God, my website is not ranking on, on page one. What's going on? Because there's a lot of things to learn about ranking on page one. There is so many variables that you need to really take care of. Now, I'm only talking about on-page SEO. There is a whole different strategy you got to take care of called off-page SEO. And off-page SEO means what's happening behind the scene of your website that needs to be taken care of. So Google knows that your website is legit, that your website is worth people going to. So off-page SEO strategies, one of the biggest things, it's called backlinks. And backlinks is simply other people's website linking back to your website. Consider Google to be basically like a popularity contest, okay? So if you have a lot of websites that are linking back to your website, that tells Google, hey, a lot of websites are referring back to this domain name. This must be an authority website. So when you are hiring an agency, for example, a lot of the times what you hire them for is to go to other people's websites or articles or blogs and writing an article on your behalf and then linking your website as part of it so you get a backlink. And you that's what you pay for, right? Which can be very expensive depending on how many backlinks you want, the quality of the backlinks. There's so many variables that I, I just don't have time to get into in this video and that's not really the purpose. The point is there's this whole new world of SEO you need to be aware of if you want to rank on page one, okay? So the basic things you want to do is definitely make sure your own on-page SEO content is relevant, i.e. put your title, put your description, put an image, and make sure you uncheck or check the hide from search engine, depending on what you want for that particular page. You want to make sure that you submit your website to Google Search Console, and you want to install Google Analytics. These are the things, the basic things you want to do. If you want to take it a step further, you can then learn about SEO, on-page SEO, off-page SEO, and implement a bunch of strategies that I've shared with you that you can go ahead and learn about, and that's like a whole different thing. Now, if you are wanting to, for example, hire somebody to actually do all of that for you, you need to be very careful with understanding what it is you're hiring them for. Because to rank on page one of Google takes, I mean, you can expect three to six months minimum, right? Like anything under six months is a total joke. Like there's no way you should even bother. You should really be thinking of a 12 month commitment if you were to hire somebody to do your SEO, okay? Now, also, there is variables to what I just said also. It depends on the niche, depends on the keyword, how competitive it is. For example, if I was to say, I'm gonna hire an agency to help me rank my website and I wanna rank for the keyword affiliate marketing, or if you wanna rank for say uh, diet or weight loss, good luck. You are going to pay that agency for the rest of your freaking life and you're gonna have a hard time ranking, okay? It's so competitive, those keywords, that it's just not gonna happen. So you want to think about SEO as a traffic strategy and you got to really evaluate, is SEO really the traffic strategy that's going to help me get customers? Now, if you are a local business, for example, or you have some sort of brick and mortar or something like that, or you're doing local events somewhere, yes, SEO is a great strategy. You should absolutely focus on that. And there's a whole different checklist that I will tell you on that, starting with going to your Google account your Gmail account and open up a Google My Business and follow all the instructions of setting up a Google My Business account, opening up Google Maps, uh, claiming the business, things along these lines. It's a whole different world that you need to uh, consider if you're a local business and you should absolutely do that if you are a local business. If you are an online business selling courses, memberships, coaching, I can tell you that in my experience, more than 90% of people SEO is not really the right strategy for you. You really should be thinking about social media. You should be thinking about collaborations. You should be thinking about three golden rules. Number one, getting in front of other people's audiences. Number two, making yourself known to those people. Number three, 
forming meaningful connections. Now, there is a really good backlink strategy where you get people linking to your website, which aligns with the, what I've just told you. And that is getting on other people's podcasts because a lot of time in podcasts, they have podcast website and then they will link back to your website. At the end of the podcast, they always say, how can people find you or whatever? And then they link in a description to go back to your website. So you're basically getting organic backlinks, which is the off-page SEO strategies, and that will take place and happen naturally over time and you're also at the same time getting in front of other people's audiences. So you're really doing marketing strategies, marketing efforts that build relationship with the podcast host, getting yourself known to his audience or her audience, and it builds up a backlink over time. Now, if you're on a new podcast every single day, well, after the end of the year, you'll have over 300 backlinks, right? So that is going to be a much more meaningful strategy for number one, your SEO, number two, your client acquisition in general. Okay, so that's my suggestion for you. Yes, do the minimum steps I told you about SEO, all the SEO optimization for your page. But then from there, Google Analytics, Google Search Console, and then go and do the social media strategies that I just told you about. Getting in front of other people's audiences, making yourself known for meaningful connections. That's how you get customers. And then the SEO strategies, if you really want to dive in, you want to invest and stuff like that, just realize you're looking at a 12 months commitment and you're gonna be paying an arm and a leg. So if you're just a solopreneur, which is the majority of my customers, it's just not the right strategy for you. You should really focus on the social media marketing strategies that I just told you about. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Hope you got value in this video. And uh, go ahead and implement. If you have any questions for me below, definitely let me know what they are. You will see that I'm recording this video also for a new website I've created, .comtruthsblog.com forward slash FAQ, which in part is an SEO strategy where I'm listing a bunch of frequently asked questions so people can find me as well. Because if I answer somebody's question on email, there is no SEO value in that. The only person got answer is that person. And I've just spent my time answering that question. Whereas if I record a video, put it on my website, optimize the information on the title, then all of a sudden that becomes a searchable question on Google that people can find. Now, again, I know it's gonna take time for Google to even index my website and for it to even come up. But at least at some point, the content is there, Google knows it's there. And as I grow this website, there's more website visitors, there's more backlinks, hopefully it will become really popular. For example, if you go to one of my websites, faq.aroundbukai.com, I actually have a lot of FAQs that I've answered there and that those pages actually do rank on page one. I also have aroundbukai.com and I've got a blog that ranks on page one. This website, .com, at the time of recording at least, which is end of 2023, very little ranking on Google. However, I know that over time, this will build up. And also it gives me a strategy where I've answered somebody a question, but next time somebody asks me a question, I can then send them this video instead of answering it again, which also saves me time. So it, it's, it's like a, a flywheel effect of content, which in turn also helps me with my YouTube channel, because in my YouTube channel, I get more subscribers. I get more people finding me on YouTube. And by the way, little hack for you, if you're watching this far, YouTube SEO is a lot easier to rank for on page one than it is to rank on Google. And because Google owns YouTube, your chances of coming up on page one of Google, your best chances of coming up on page one of Google is by recording a YouTube video. I talk about that in a totally different free little mini course that I've done on YouTube SEO. If you want to check it out, I'll leave it somewhere around here. And there's going to be a page for you to check it out where I talk about that as well. And you could be able to see that uh, free training video as well. I've got a whole course about YouTube SEO. So anyway, uh, but I, on my YouTube channel, there is a mini course and you can definitely check it out. It's very detailed. And it's going to talk to you about on-page SEO, off-page SEO, backlinks and things along these lines and tell you a little bit about how to rank on, on YouTube, which is actually a lot easier. So there, there you go. That's about it. So I do think that SEO is a very important strategy to follow. But I think it's something that builds up over time for solopreneurs. And I think it's something you need to just be aware of, but not focus on. It's something that you just, you just should just come and build up naturally. And you should really focus on those three rules that I told you about. Get in front of other people's audiences, making yourself known for meaningful connections. So that's about it. Thanks all for watching. Really appreciate you. The next video, I'll share with you that YouTube SEO mini course if you want to check it out. And that's about it. Thanks a lot. I'll speak to you soon. Cheers.